Um, another question that I wanted to ask you was, you know, at Sundance, where it won the Audience Award and the grand prize, and I actually was at the award ceremony, and I thought after Damien won the Audience Award, I thought he would really f get really upset because it's very rare that people win the Audience Award and the grand prize, and he never would have settled for the Audience Award. <laughs> it would have made him crazy. You, you know me too well. So <laughs> um, I was really pleased that you won the grand prize as well, but it was some, an issue that came up immediately. People said, oh, this would be an immensely successful big movie if only it wasn't jazz. You know, that jazz is, in our culture, a fairly rarefied thing. And the fact that you stuck to keeping it a jazz movie how did you do that? I mean, you must have gotten a lot of pressure. Why can't he be a rock drummer? Or mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, and I also got a lot of why, you know, to be honest, why does it have to be J.K. Simmons, you know? Um, J.K. Simmons is a legendary character actor, but he means, uh, at least at the time that we were financing the movie, it, he doesn't mean much uh, in this strange world of foreign sales that uh, dictates a lot of what, indie movies of kind of plus two million dollars uh, get made uh, in America today. Um, it's, it's based on who, who they can actually sell territories to. So, you know, there was a whole list of actors that I was recommended to, um, um, and I was told point blank actually very early on that, um, that if you want J.K. Simmons in this role, you'll, you'll never get more than 500,000 to do it. So you should make a choice right now. Either you can do this movie with J.K. Simmons and $500,000, or you can do it for what we've budgeted you probably actually need, which is about two to three million. Um, but it needs to be, you need to try to get Kevin Spacey or Jeff Daniels or, or, or uh, any, any, you know, wh whoever. Um, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's, you kind of brace yourself for a fight, but then I, I wound up actually having to fight that fight less than I guess I would have expected to. And I think it's because when you have someone like someone, you, you, you're just lucky to have uh, a kind of patron. And that's what, that's what Jason Reitman really became for me. Um, someone who people, you know, like and trust in Hollywood, who, um, who, they could kind of, he was the one person who was probably capable of convincing people that this sort of newbie director with a jazz drummer movie with J.K. Simmons should be made for $3 million. And uh, there's probably very few people in Hollywood who would be capable of pulling that magic act. Um, and so that's where, you know, Guy Madeline was the kind of movie that, you know, I was pounding on a lot of doors myself. Here, it was actually a comparatively luxurious circumstance to have much better door pounders at my, at my disposal. Um, and, and so I wound up making exactly the movie I wanted to make. Um, and when it came to script and, and editing, um, we couldn't, no one for $3 million would give me final cut, but they could give Jason Reitman final cut. And Jason Reitman, you know, we discussed and said, and J the, the idea was privately, the financiers didn't need to know this, but Reitman would just back up my final cut. So essentially, I had Final Cut, um, which is unheard of, uh, you know. And so, uh, so I had this remarkably spoiled kind of experience making exactly the movie I wanted to make with exactly the people I wanted to make about exactly the subject, no matter how rarefied that I wanted it to be. But I really, at the end of the day, can't really take too much credit for that on my own. It really, the credit is having the the good luck of 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 coming into the orbit of people who are willing to take, to, to take that sort of stand, take that kind of gamble, and, you know, just back you up. 